Are you a hippie or a cowboy? Hey, it's Brain Muffin back with a beer review, and now we've got some more Tennessee beer, finally. So this is from the Tennessee Brew Works, which I think is in Nashville. It's 10brew.com, locally owned and operated uh, Tennessee Brew Works, Nashville, Tennessee, finally tuned. So this is their IPA, it's Hippies and Cowboys. Uh, looks like it was bottled on uh, February 28th, 2024, so it's a couple months old. Uh, six percent alcohol. I was looking for that in the store, and it was—it's literally right in front of me. Why am I echoing so much? But hopefully, uh, you all can't pick that up. Twelve ounce can, obviously, and uh, true to the. So we have "Welcome to Tennessee." We've got the three stars that are on the Tennessee flag, and a guitar underneath. Independent. So there's something I missed from Stone, right there. And I know I bring that up all the time, and it's kind of. But it's because it, they were so fiercely independent, and then they're bought up. So, and I didn't check the, yeah, it's not too bad. But got this at Black, Beer, Black Bear. I also picked up some other stuff that we're going to do in other reviews. But um, no one knew exactly what style of IPA. So I don't know if we're going to get a very piney IPA, if we're going to get a uh, scan to learn more. I guess I could have done that. But I guess I'll do that later when my phone's no, not record me. Or is it going to be a real fruity IPA? Now, some of them have both. But this is kind of a, ooh, it's kind of an East Coast, West Coast style. Uh, not to be confused with the, um, no, they're not milkshake IPAs. That came later. But the, the hazy IPAs, the Northeast. But, you know, even those sometimes are real fruity and sometimes are real piney. So, and I, uh, I feel like I'm sideways. I'm sitting sideways. Maybe I'll adjust it for the next one. So, <clears throat> it is kind of piney, but it's not overly so. So, here's what we got going on. Let's get the uh, chance at a thumbnail. So, it is a bit hazy. It's a bit cloudy. I don't know if that's a chill haze or on purpose. This is what a lot of my IPAs look like. Kind of an orangey color. But it's got a nice balance because there's hints of pine, there's hints of fruit. I want to say there's passion fruit. But it's, it's not overly citrus. I'm sure some people could get lemon out of that. I can't, <clears throat> but man, it's still a little cold. Um, I'm trying to think of what, what kind of uh, liquor pairings I might want to try with this one, but I don't know. <clears throat> but yeah, you can get the, the, the hop residue, I guess you could call it, on your tongue starts to build. The more you drink it. Now, I don't know why my voice is so scruffy. <clears throat> but it's like, it's a it's a nice balanced IPA. It's not overly done. It has just enough bitterness, I'm sure, once the malts open up and it warms up a little bit more. I just have to be careful with the cans. I've noticed uh, more so than bottles. If I let it sit around too much, it foams too much when I open it. And I don't know if that's because it the cans tend to be right to the top, whereas a bottle's got a little bit of head space, and so it tends to open unless it's infected. But that is a nice IPA. It's not it's not huge. I mean, granted, six percent. It's a it's a regular IPA. It's not overly malty. There's no this. Some of them I've said this almost for like the multi, like it's rusty on the back end. It finishes nice. It has a, a clean nose. It's got pretty good head retention, especially out of a canned beer, especially for being cold. It's holding the glass well. Yeah, hints of pine, hints of fruitiness, you know, citrusy fruit, but it's not overly so. It's not like it's, you know, like you're drinking an orange drink or, or chewing on a pine cone. It's well balanced in between. Very nice. This is the kind of IPA you could have with 
almost anything. You can still do it with spicy food. You can still do it with steaks and mushrooms and stuff. But it's nice and clean uh, finishing. There, there's still a lingering bitterness. It does hang around. But maybe really savory or sour things would not be a good combination. But that's nice. When I check into Untap, I'm going to put a four and a half out of five. That's really good. And I'm just holding a, a half a percent, a half a point. Um, so this is like a nine out of ten to me, just in case I can ever have it on draft. Because I imagine it's a little bit smoother. Um, but no, that's that's pretty good. I, I really like that. So, and my, my I have a cousin. I think she lives in, near Nashville. I don't know if she lives... I know they, her and her husband have a place on the Cumberland Plateau, but that's more toward Chattanooga. But um, I know they're building like a cabin or something. But um, it is kind of interesting because they're up on this hill. Like I said, it's in the Cumberland Plateau, so they're out of the mountains. And where we are near the valley, <laughs> uh, uh, in, in the mountains, we're actually higher in elevation when they are at the top. So I, I know it's all relative, you know, you take off from the highest mountain here. And if you were to fly, f stay flat relative to uh, that altitude above sea level and not the ground, you'd run right into the ground before you got to Denver, Colorado. So that's a mile in elevation, but you're, you know, you're at the foot of the Rockies. But no, I like it. I really like it. There's no weird off flavors that I've been able to detect. Now, granted, I'm older and I'm not as sensitive as I used to be. And I kind of, you know, I got away from the BJCP stuff and all that. Uh, sort of started studying, but then just didn't have the time. So I'm not a beer judge by any imagination. I did participate in some many years ago. And then I've had, I got too busy and I didn't have time to, was interested in the classes. Several uh, homebrew clubs in Cincinnati did the classes. And I just, and, and I used to be, there was a homebrew magazine, what I don't remember the name of anymore, that I probably ought to rejoin. Uh, but what I liked about it is they had different styles and they had like a really good, they had uh, commercial grades that, you know, that were really close to style and, you know, what was different about them if they weren't. If I remember correctly, three per style per issue. Zimmergy or Zimmergy, something like that. Zimmerinium, I don't know. But that's nice. And it, it just, just keeps, as the malts open up, it just keeps getting nicer. So four and a half out of five, nine out of 10, uh, just for that, you know, chance to get a five out of five if I ever have it on draft. I don't know when, I don't know what's available um, around here, but this is the, you know, Brew Works, Tennessee. And most time if I find stuff on draft around here, it's you know, made in Johnson City. Uh, or I'm actually at the brewery, right? Appalachian, either version of the Appalachian Sun Brewery, Appalachian Mountain Brewery, or um, uh, <laughs> Damascus Brewery. And the Heritage, Appalachian Heritage Distillery is supposed to be opening a brewery soon too. And I really hope that they do something with their cats. They've got five-year-old uh, bourbon that they sell, and I'd love to for them to make a stout. I know it's stereotypical, but still, put it in their own bourbon, have their own bourbon, and especially if you can get the bourbon that came out of that barrel and then get the stout that came out of that barrel. I, I don't know if you could, but that'd be awesome. All right, I am way overdue. Thank you very much for stopping by. Thanks for the likes and the subscribes. Let me know in the comments below the types of things you want to, other beers you want to see, other drinks you want to see. I've expanded out, and now I had some other sodas that I ended up not reviewing. Um, I think I'm going to try as far as sodas that those of beer orientation. So ginger beer, things like that. And I know in some countries, those are fermented and I might try my hand at taking some of these and trying to ferment them after the fact. I know there's some stuff I got to put in it. I think it's baking soda or some, something to kill out the carbonation and the preservatives and then, um, take the sugars and, and ferment them. And I understand they're from fructose corn syrup and all that crap, but a decent yeast will take care of that. So 
it might get some cidery notes, but I don't know. It's usually nitrogen problems. So I might have to um, get some air stone or something. Thank you very much, and I will see you. Goodbye.